Joining us now, North Dakota Senator Kevin Kramer and Texas Congressman Keith Self. Gentlemen, I want to play some tape from uh, our distinguished friend, Senator Marsha Blackburn, on this Secret Service assassination mess. Take a listen, please. How could the Secret Service allow their protectee, President Donald Trump, to take the stage at 6 o'clock when at 5.51 they had identified a potential threat, 5.53 they alerted the spotters and the sharpshooters, and then at 6 o'clock they clear him to go on the stage? All right, thanks for that. That's a pretty good question, Senator Kevin Kramer. She's Marsha's asking a pretty good question. What do you say? Not only that, but it's an easy question to answer if you're willing to answer it. And it's a simple question. There's a question that several of us tried to ask yesterday on the briefing with, with uh, Christopher Ray and the head of the Secret Service, um, Kimberly Cheadle, and, and they wouldn't answer it. So you, last night we get the good fortune of bumping into her, the, the, the director of the Secret Service. She went into a, a, a nearby suite. We thought, well, now's our chance to get the question answered, walk in, try to ask the same question. She says it's not appropriate to talk about it here. Um, we need to go someplace else. We walk out the door, and she runs, and we chased her. And the irritation with the lack of transparency. Oh, she ran? You you were there? I, Who I, else I, was there? I, I was there. It's John Barrasso. Barrasso was there. Yeah, James Langford and Marsha. So, so that's four U.S. senators. I know it's not impressive, but four. Uh, yeah, I'd say it's uh, four U.S. senators, <laughs> period. Yeah. Full stop. And she says not appropriate to talk? Not to talk to about whom it. is it appropriate well, to talk? Well, that was the question I asked along the whole route through the mezzanine, up the stairs to the some broom closet that they all shoved her into and yes. wouldn't let me even get my hand in the door. You look exhausted. It's been a very difficult yeah, no, day for you. It was I a workout. Tell. I don't mind telling you. But, um, <laughs> but the, the, the point is that there's a tremendous lack of trust, which has been well earned mm -hmm. in our Secret Service and particularly the leadership, not the rank and file, but the leadership. Yes. There was a major problem, security breach problem here, and we're asking the most obvious question. Marsha articulates it perfectly, mm -hmm. and they don't want to answer it. Congressman Keith Self, um, also I, I'm reading today, local police, local police told the Secret Service they could not secure that building uh, where this uh, punk kid uh, crawled up on top of it. They were told that. So let's get this right. There was a threat before the event happened, and then uh, the Secret Service was told that locals couldn't secure the building. So how in the world could the Secret Service ignore this? That building is outside the perimeter to begin with, 150 yards outside the perimeter for a uh, major congressional candidate, former president, makes no sense. You cannot explain that. You can't explain why there was not a sniper on the water tower. You cannot explain these things. I don't have a good explanation. But uh, I will tell you, the local police are also saying that the Secret Service told them not to do certain things. And I'm not going to get into the mm -hmm. conspiracy theories, but if this sounds like there was a total breakdown between the Secret Service, the state uh, police, and the local law enforcement. Uh, whose fault is that? This is where the House of Representatives comes in. Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, has been very clear. The House of Representatives will conduct an aggressive investigation, yes. and it's going to start as soon as we get back to work on Monday. And uh, he has promised that we will get to the bottom of this because the questions just grow every single day. I mean, I think the, the, usually the local Secret Service field officers and Secret Service people will give their life to stop a bullet. That's, usually that's the job. This whole thing, though, is a big snafu. There are Secret Service men and women throughout this convention in the perimeter. And I, I look, I go up to them and thank them for their service. I've worked with them in the White House. I've done that yes, in have. two uh, terms in the government. But Kevin Kramer, Joe Biden never fires anybody, never fires anybody. And so many people are telling me in the last several days, not only does this woman need to be fired, but her coterie at the top of the Secret Service needs to be fired. And rank and file Secret Service people are telling me the same thing. So therein lies the, the big problem. If you're going to restore the trust of the people in the service, you have to fire the, the, the person at the top and, and probably a pretty good layer at the top because these problems, maybe it's a resource problem, maybe it's a communication problem, but these are the responsibility of the leadership. Mm. And the fact that they won't answer basic questions to members of Congress to whom they're accountable, mm. 
that's never going to lift the confidence. I got to get out of here. You guys yeah, are great. Senator Kevin Kramer, Congressman Keith Sell, thank you ever so much. We appreciate it.